My name is James Browning. I'm the customer service representative here at the SoftFlex company. Um, we are a uh, stringing wire, a beading wire manufacturer here based in Sonoma, California. Uh, we do have a gallery that's open every Wednesday from 3, or sorry, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, if you're in the area, please come by and say hi. Uh, and if you call to make a phone order, you may actually get me on the phone. Um, today we're starting a new web series and uh, we're going to be exploring wire and its uses in jewelry making and um, exploring outside of just making findings uh, and connections in wire. We're actually going to be working on making pieces uh, entirely out of wire and some beads and, you know, other little things to make them cool. So um, I hope that you enjoy this series. Uh, I have a few things to go over with you today, um, and I'll show you some of my work as well so you can get some uh, inspiration. So let's begin. Okay, so let's start with the essential tools for working with wire. Softflex actually just unveiled a new kit to help you start working with craft wire. Let's see what's in it. First we have wire straightening tools. This is a nylon headed tool where you use this to straighten kinks out of the wire itself. And I will show you how we do that in just a moment. The kit also comes with round nose pliers. This is a great tool for making loops and for getting into tight reach areas because it's got a very, very skinny point there. Bent nose pliers are also included. See how they have a bend in their nose and thus the reason why they're called bent nose. Um, I use these a lot to um, help smooth the ends into my work. It, they're really helpful. And then finally for pliers we have cutters. So this just is a simple wire cutter to help snip off your wire. Now the kit comes in uh, three choices. You get uh, copper and non-tarnished silver and we also have a gold cover, color that I don't actually have here but it comes in 22 gauge. We also have included some findings here. We have a couple of pairs of ear wires and then there is a bead mat like the one here, all included. And then we have also included a project sheet for you. All right, now when you are out shopping for wire, there's a couple of things that you need to know about. First, you need to understand uh, how to tell the size of your wire. Uh, most of your projects are going to be referring to gauges. You'll see this as a number and then either GA or G. Now the gauge of the wire actually refers to how thin the wire is. Softflex carries wire from 18 gauge to 28 gauge. Now the tricky thing is, the higher the number, the thinner the wire is. This is 28 gauge. I don't know if you can see it, come on, focus in. There we go. So very, very thin. And uh, try and hold on to these little plastic things that come with it because the wire will totally unravel off your spool and that is a whole lot of not fun. So here we have 20, or sorry, this is 18 gauge wire. Look how much bigger that is. So much bigger. See if we put them right next to each other. This is 28 gauge and this is 18. So remember, the smaller the number, the bigger the wire. Bigger the number, smaller the wire. All right? Cool. The other thing that you're going to hear people talk about when wire crafting is the hardness of the wire. Um, this is actually referring to the malleability of the wire. Uh, here at Softflex, our wires are generally between soft and dead soft, which means that they're really easy to work with. And when working in wire, you really do want a softer wire because we're going to be making tight loops and bends, and that's really hard to do when you're working with a, uh, a hard gauge of wire. 
Now, um, you can uh, work with your wire and end up breaking the wire, and that is because you've uh, hardened it by working with it. That's called work hardening. Now, um, if you have ever broken a pop top off of a can, that's called work hardening. And that's because you've bent that piece of metal at a single point multiple times and it's created a hard spot, so it just snaps. You can do that really easy with wire, especially with the thin kind, because that work hardens really quickly. Um, work hardening is good, though, because if you make some findings out of soft wire, you'll want to harden that um, so that it doesn't bend as easy. And we'll actually talk about work hardening in future videos. Okay, now... Um, let's actually take a look at some of the things that you can do in wire. Now this is not going to be our tutorial, I'll get to that in just a moment, but this is some of the things that I've done. Um, this is this is general wire wrapping that you'll see how smaller gauges are wrapped around larger gauges in patterns to make it uh, you know pretty. And this is all out of wire except for this bead. So it's really versatile stuff. Um, here is a piece that I did. It's um, a tree of life with copper wire and some um, peridot chips. And it's wrapped around a, uh, a hoop, a jewelry hoop that I found at an antique store. They were really inexpensive, so I got those. Um, you'll see a lot of this work out there. This is called heavy, uh, heavy or intricate wire wrapping. Um, I just took a basic bead and then created a simple pattern with my wires and captured that bead that way. Here is another piece with the heavy wire. Um, I tried to utilize some of the colored wire that SoftFlex carries. Um, and you can find all of our wires and tools on our website, which is www.softflexcompany.com. And I encourage you to go there and take a look at what we have. Um, in the future, we're actually going to be doing this little project. Isn't this adorable? It's a little bird's nest with some howlite beads um, all wrapped up in wire. Really simple, two things and some pliers is all you need to make this. So we'll do that probably next time. So today, we are actually going to be making a really simple wire wrap. I call it the chicken wire wrap and that's because the the way that the wire wraps around um, reminds me of chicken wire. See the little twists there? I think that looks like chicken wire. I'm sure it's probably got a real name somewhere, and if you know it, you can always leave a comment for me, let me know. Um, but this is what we're going to do today. This is just one example that I made. You can do this on any stone, really, but it's really useful for rough cut or simple cut jewels, um, something with facets, like crystal points. You'll see that a lot on crystal points. Then we have, you know, this nice smooth bead that I did. It's got a little curly cue on it. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, I have a faceted, rough, simple cut bead on this one. But um, one of the things I wanted to show you is see how the different gauges of wire can give you an entirely different look um, on your piece. So, Think about that when you're choosing your wires for your projects. Um, so like I said, this is a great wrap for irregular stones. This is a little Venus that I wrapped. Um, so I can hang it on a pendant and wear it if I wanted to. Um, I don't know if any of you out there have some toddlers that love to collect rocks and expect you to love them as much as they do. By wrapping them up and putting them on a little cord, you can actually give them back to them to wear. Um, so that is some ideas for you. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to wrap this piece of sea glass that I have. Um, if you're just starting out with this kind of wrap, looking for stones that have kind of a point to it really does help um, because it gives it kind of a harder chance of it falling out because you've got larger in the top, smaller in the bottom, and gravity's not going to pull it out. So there's my wire, and I am using 26 gauge wire today. And this is bare copper. I prefer to use bare copper um, because I um, have actually 
used what's called liver of sulfur to um, put a patina on the wire itself. And that gives it a different look. But Selflex does actually offer um, non-tarnish wire that's been coated and that actually come in pre-antiqued color. So if you like the color of uh, patinaed copper, you can always go ahead and get some of that. So I'm going to start with a two foot approximate piece of wire. So I'm just going to snip this off here. All right. Remember, see how it's kind of unraveling there? This is what this is for, to make sure that it doesn't just all come off. So hold on to those things. So um, I'm going to find the middle of this. All right, so I found the middle, and I'm just going to snip it right there. It doesn't have to be super, super exact. This is wire. It's kind of... Um, forgiving that way. Now I'm going to take my bent nose pliers. I'm going to hang on to one end, and this is where I show, told you I was going to show you how to use these pliers. So see how um, the wire is kind of eh, bendy, cranky. By taking this wire and sliding it through, you're doing two things at once. You're straightening it out. And then you're also work hardening it just a little bit. So um, remember not to do that too much or else you're going to make your wire pretty brittle. So you want to get it as straight as you can within the first couple of passes. See how much smoother that looks? That's pretty. Okay, let's move these out of the way. All right, so. The first and most important part about this weave is the twisting. And while you may want to create a cross and twist, that is the wrong thing. You don't want to do that because you're going to end up wrapping one wire around the other. And we actually want to marry these wires together by twisting. So make an X instead. And then grab one side of that X in one hand and take your other fingers and twist them. See how they're twisting and not wrapping around each other? You want to do this, I would say, three to four times. I've got three here. Let's add one more. This makes it so that these wires are now together. If you do it one or two times, unfortunately that's going to start pulling apart when you're pulling on it and adding some tension. All right, so now let's take this twist and we're gonna put it on the side of the stone here. Now, um, putting this twist wherever you want it is, um, is going to determine how many wraps you have on the stone. If you want more wraps on your stone, these little twists, you want to start down low. If you want less, then you would start higher up. You'll see the higher up ones on like crystal points a lot so that you can leave the pointed part down and it looks really pretty that way. All right, so we're going to take two of these ends here and we're going to pull them around. Kind of fiddly, I know, but once this part is done, then it gets much easier. All right, okay, so now we're going to make another X and we're going to try and get it up as close to the stone as you can, but we have ways of tightening it later, so don't panic if you don't get it there. Remember, wire is forgiving because it's not expensive, whereas if you're using like silver, always start with copper, that's what I say. Copper is inexpensive. You can find it actually at like hardware stores if you want to just try starting without putting too much investment into it. Okay, so I twisted it and then I bent it up. So now all of my wires are kind of pointing up in the air. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to decide where we want our next twist. 
We've got a twist here, and we've got a twist here. I think I'd like to put a twist here. So make another X and do the twist. One, two, three. Just one more. All right. And then push it up. And let's do another one on this side. Kind of want to keep them working the same so nobody gets left behind. There's one, two, three. All right. So let's do one more. Four. Kind of trying to keep the pattern the same. So if you start with four twists, try and keep four twists on your piece. You know what? We still have a lot of room. Let's bring our wires over here and do another twist. And I find if you put the wire over the top, I was twisting away is the easiest way to twist. Twisting towards you is difficult and it's hard to watch what you're doing. And then push it up. And let's bring the wire, let's bring it down here. Let's try going over the top. Now, Seriously, it doesn't really matter where your wires are as long as you twist them together and not wrap one around the other. But I find if you're wrapping away from you, putting the closest wire over the top is the best way to get that done. Okay, so now we've kind of come to the top of our piece. This is kind of an odd shaped one. You know, what I think I want to do is maybe do let's do one more wrap out front. That should get our wires pretty much close to the same height at the end there. So see how it's harder to do it when you're underneath? Okay. One you three four okay there that's good let's do it on this side now one two three four okay see how that's kind of fiddly use your fingers and move it around i'm going to show you a cool trick at the end here all right now this is my least favorite part of a piece is ending it because there's just so many options and things you can do. Today we're going to do really simple. We're going to make a little bale at the top by twisting our wires together. So first we're going to take this. I'm going to add just a couple more twists just to kind of bring it up. So it's pretty much meeting the other one fairly easy. Okay. I'll straighten out my wires a little. And now I'm going to twist these together. Now this, we don't really need to worry about how many times I'm going to twist it. I just want maybe one or two. Now, if you see, we've got one set that's kind of coming up and the other set's kind of going out. So this out one, we're going to kind of ignore for a second. And we're going to concentrate on these two wires. I'm going to get, sorry. I'm going to get my little pliers here and straighten these out a little so they're not quite as kinky looking. All right. Now, um, you can do this one of two ways. You can use this. This is bare wire and have them opened like I did with this one. But I think just in the interest of keeping it kind of simple, we're going to do it this way. So. We're going to take these wires and we're going to twist them a lot. So here we go. I'm going to try and shoot for about one inch of twisted wire. That's what we're going to create our bale from. I think that's about good. All right. Now, get your round nose pliers out, okay? And we're going to put them at the very end here because we want the widest part. I can sometimes use a pencil to do this. 
So let's reposition this so that we've got an easier way. Here we go. So what we want to do is we just want to twist this around. You see that? We're just making this a, a round piece up here. See how it's kind of round now? And then we're going to hold on to this twisted thing and we're going to twist around and make a little base out of this. Now one of the drawbacks of using um, thinner wire is that you really have to be mindful of how you are working this wire because this wire has been worked a lot already and this is getting to the point where if you are not watching what you're doing you can snap off the wire so you just got to be careful not wiggle it around too much but do you see how we've taken that extra wire and we've moved it uh, around and so we've got a nice little little base there that's going to hold all of our wires and that's another thing about wires you don't really have to worry about glue or connecting because once a wire has been bent into shape unless somebody actually physically straightens it it stays there so I'm going to just snip off these pieces and cover them so they don't go flying everywhere that's a safety tip from me to you it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye all right, I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers. So the worst thing about wire jewelry is the, the wire is pokey. There's a hard, hard wire and it can poke. So what I do is I take these wires and I use my pliers and I just bend them down and I try and keep them as close to the body of whatever I'm working as I can. So, just kind of bend it in, burnish it down, whatever you need to do. All right, now, the best way to check to see if that's done is you go back with your fingers and you feel for snags. And I think we did pretty good. No snags there today. All right, and we have these random sticky outy wires. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to twist them around the rest of the stuff here so that it's towards the bottom. And now we have two cool pieces of wire that we can play with. Um, you could just clip them off if you wanted to, but we have a great set of round nose pliers here, so I'm gonna show you a trick. So get the smallest part of your wire and just twist it around and stick it back in there. Twist it around some more and just make a gentle let go gentle curve oh can you see what i'm doing cuz i can't now of course if you want a smaller spiral or curve or what have you then you would want to start with a smaller piece of wire. So this is fiddly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers and just kind of mess with it a little so it's a little bit more rounded. Just squish it down. I kind of like that pointy out thing though. Maybe I'll keep that. And then I'm gonna position it right there. Okay, now I've decided I don't like this wire. I don't need that wire. So, I'm gonna clip it off. There we go. And then I'm going to find that end. And I'm gonna burnish it down. Okay, there we go. Our first piece of wrapped. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to do to finish this off. We did one of them, 
which was burnishing all the wires down so there's no pokey outy bits, which is always good. Second is kind of a, a cool little trick. And we want to make sure that our cage is nice and tight. So we're going to take our needle nose pliers, our round nose pliers, and we're going to grab a straight piece of wire between the two twists. And we're just going to twist it a little. See how it makes that little, little twist there? All right. Now, I like to do it in a couple of different places. And what this is doing is it's pulling these wires tight so that there's no real gaps. There's no chance of this thing slipping off. And it's also giving it a little bit of a visual design element, which we love. All right. I think I, I'm going to put another one right here. There we go. Look at that. You know, once that is all dried from my sweaty hands, <laughs> that will look like a nice piece of sea glass that's been all wrapped up. Put that on a nice little cord, you've got a great little necklace. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I know I did. And look forward to my next video here on Conversations with Wire. Thank you.